Welcome everyone once again. Now we are going to create the front end of our application. So for the front end of our application, we will be using React JS. So the first things first, for making the back end of our application, we were using the Spring Tool Suite. And for making the front end, we'll be using Visual Studio Code. So if you don't have, you can just download and start writing on Visual Studio Code. Let me give the prerequisite side to you what all things we required. First of all, I will go to the working directory where I'm going to write the front end of our code. I am going to use this uh, React JS workspace and here I will be writing the code. So the prerequisite site here is one is I have already told the Visual Studio code. The second thing is you need to have something called node installed in your system. If you want to check if you have node in your system, just type in CMD from any location you can type okay so i will type node hyphen version if you are getting the version here that means that node is already installed in your system if you are getting command not recognized that means that your node is either not installed or the environment is not set up so you need to have this node in your system the second thing is you need to have either npm or npx if you are using a mac system then you have to check if yarn is already installed in your system in my system i already have the npm let me check the npm version so if you are getting the version of npm that means that the npm is already installed in your system so likewise these three are the prerequisite the node.js the npm must be installed and you need to have visual studio code or any id that supports writing react js applications let's see how we can create a react js application you need to type npx create hyphen react hyphen app and the name of the application here i'm going to give the name of the application as react frontend now click on enter and this will start creating an application it will download the all the dependencies it will make a project structure and it will be totally ready for us for writing the code so it's installing all the packages after that it will create a folder here whose name will be react frontend you can see react frontend this is the project that is created so give it some time it will download all the required dependencies for you and it will be ready in just a matter of few minutes so after spending some reasonable amount of time finally i have got a project that is created successfully let me show you we have got this react frontend application which has all these predefined files and folders. Now, we haven't done any coding yet, but we can run this application now also. How we can run the application to make sure that it is correctly generated? See here the commands are cd react content. We are navigating inside this folder, and after that, we are giving npm start. Click on enter, and this will start the embedded server, and your project will be launched. So, let's see. So it has opened a new tab where the address is localhost 3000. That is the default port for React.js application. And we have got a nice looking logo in here. So this is what we get when we create a project using create react app. So now let me stop this server. Click on control C. Yes. Okay. So I have stopped. Now we are going to do all our coding in Microsoft Visual Studio Code. So how do you open up code from this location? Just type in code if you already have that installed in your system and press enter and this will open a Visual Studio Code. After that, if your folder is not listed here, what you can do, you can just click on this open folder. You can go to file and open folder. And after that, select the folder where your code is located. So my code is located in React.js workspace, React frontend, and I will select this folder. Okay, so I have got all the required files in here. We have got a package.json file contains all the required dependencies for a React.js project. And most importantly, you can check all the versions of the dependencies that are available here. And this is pretty much about your dependencies. So it's like a form.xml. Okay. So the next thing is the public folder you can see here. And this public folder, if you open it, you will see so many things in here. So the logo that you were seeing on the web is nothing but this logo. Okay, this might be some other logo. Okay, it contains a file called index.html. So 
as you know that react is used to build a single page application so this index.html will render all our components next thing is the src folder if you see here this file will contain all the global components that we are going to use in this application it can be app.js all the global javascript along with the css files index.js here this is the top render component of a react application you will also see a node module here all the packages that are installed by npm will be listed in here okay so we have got familiar with the project structure now you can see app.js here this contains the definition of our application that gets rendered on our browser currently we are seeing a default logo of uh, this react.js that is because this is rendered in here if you remove this all these tags you will not be able to see anything in here let me remove from here okay and now save it now if you go to run this application i think we have already stopped it let me start our application so for that we have to go to terminal new terminal okay and this terminal is our react front end okay so here we have to give npm start so this will again start up our application and it will show this web page it will not show the logo now it will simply show a blank space because we have removed the logo code from there hopefully you are clear about the basic package structure files and folders that we get by default now let's move to the next step let me stop the server once again click on ctrl c and press yes okay so the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to add one more dependency that is bootstrap so how do we install a new dependency or package you have to give npm install and after that you have to give bootstrap and save click on enter and it will start downloading the dependencies from internet okay so the bootstrap is downloaded so whatever the things that we are downloading we have to go and add it in our index.js okay in here we are going to import bootstrap so we are basically making the use of this bootstrap to get the css classes that are available in bootstrap so you have to add this statement import and in the single quotes you have to give this address bootstrap slash dist slash css slash bootstrap dot min dot css all this code will be available on my website and the link will be given in the description okay so this is how our index.js will look like in the back end of our application we have exposed one api that is a user's api to get the list of all the users and from the react.js application we are going to consume that api so for that we are going to use something called axios so we have to add axios in our front-end application so how do we add axios in the terminal you have to go and type npm add axios and click on enter so this will basically add axios to your working directory so we have made axios available for us to use it in our application and now we are going to create a new folder inside this src and we will name it services and inside this services folder we will create a javascript file and we will name it user services we will give this class the class name the class name is user services this is the same way how we do it in java and we are also going to define the url from it where it is going to fetch the data so we will be giving that in our constant so how do we define a constant let's say const the name of the constant user rest api url and the url that is from where it is going to pick the data that is http colon double slash localhost colon 8080 and after that api that we exposed get all users we will cross check that while running the application okay so we are going to use the axios so we have to import it right import axios from where axios now we are going to define a method inside this class that will actually make use of axios and fetch the data from that url so the method we will define is get users and return axios dot get and inside this get we are going to pass this url okay and we are done we just have to export this whatever the class we make export either that class or the object of that class so we will give a statement export 
default and new object of user service okay so we are done with our user service class let me make one more folder here and we will name that as components so basically in components what we will do once we get the data from the user service we will write some tags to arrange that data in a format that can be understandable so in the components we are going to create a new js file that is user components.js click on enter so first of all define the class and the class name is user components it will extend react component okay but we don't have this react in here so we have to import it okay now we are also going to make use of user service class so let me import this class as well the next thing that we have to do is define a constructor so this constructor we will define we will take props and after that we are calling the super and we are returning this state in an array of users okay we are done with the props now the next thing that we are going to use is a method that is component did mount so let me first write the method and i will explain about it what it does component did mount so we'll write it here after the constructor so this component did mount is called immediately after the component is mounted you can say this as a hook that gets invoked right after the component has been mounted after the first render life cycle so it is called only once in a life cycle before the execution of render method you should also know that this is primarily used to implement server side logic before the actual rendering happens in the simple terms you can understand that we are making a call to an external server that is our spring boot application so before rendering the results onto the browser we have to call this method so inside this method we are going to write some logic where we will be calling this user service let me write it in a smaller case to differentiate this is not a class we are using the reference okay so user service and inside this we have a method called get users okay then response and that's it about component did mount now we are going to call the render method that is that will actually do the rendering for us so in the render method we will have some div tags and table rows columns we will call a render method and inside this render method we are going to return html components we'll have a navbar and the background will fit will be black and variant as dark these all classes are coming from bootstrap we will also have to import bootstrap into our project so we'll close this inside this navbar we will be having a brand identifier and this will be capital never thought brand and we will have a href element where we will be giving it a home and we will name it as name of my channel okay so instead of typing each line one by one i will just copy and paste this a uh, whole never item so that it will be easy for you as well as me to save some time so i'm going to paste the html elements that i'm using in this tutorial you can get give a look at it and explain what all the things we have done we have just made a never never brand we have made we have made it a, we have used the class auto so that it will automatically adjust the width then the links i have given the home the feature the pricing okay so the next thing is i have given a form for search bar that will be, we will be seeing that in some time what all things okay the next thing is we have added a table so the class of that table is stripped table that is coming from a bootstrap one thing we have not done we have not imported the bootstrap let's go and import it so the import statement we will give it at the top okay so the components that we are using here is navbar nav form form control and the button so these all things i have used if you are not using any of it then you probably might get some error on the web page okay so the next thing is the table we have given the t head is for table heading then the table rows the heading rows are user id the first name last name and the email id and in the body we have got the state of the user and we are just using a map 
to map the keys with the proper heading element so this is the thing that we have done and after that we have closed the body and the table the div okay the final thing that we have to do is that we have to export this class so we have to write the export statement user components and we are done with our user components now in the app.js we have to pass this user components so how do we pass user components here user components and we have to close it okay so the user components is automatically imported and we are done with our application check the output but we see this in the red line there is an error here we have to give this symbol user services this should be services here the name of the class okay and one more thing is react bootstrap we have not downloaded the dependency so we have to download it and the command is npm install react hyphen bootstrap hyphen hyphen save so it has downloaded react bootstrap let's go to our spring boot application and let me cross check the endpoint that we have given and the endpoint is so we have to make the changes accordingly here user service and let's start our application and we will start first okay so our backend part of the application is started let's go and check if we are getting any data from localhost localhost 8080 users list and we have got this data now let's go and run the front end part of our application and we will just type here npm start so our application is started on port 3000 and we have got a very good looking website but we are not getting the data we'll look after that first of all you see uh, these are coming from the react bootstrap okay and let's see why we are not getting the data so we'll go to the console okay so we are getting this access to xml http request this is a problem of the cross domain where two different applications are interacting it will be blocked by the course policy so we have to make some change in our application so that it will not find this as a cross domain application it will treat as the same application so for that we have to go to our spring boot and and in our controller we have to give this annotation cross origin we have to import this okay and this is the url of our front end application after giving this let me restart the application so our application is started and our front end is running let me refresh it and you can see that we are getting the data that we were getting from the back end so this was the very beginner friendly tutorial where we have learned very basics about the how a react js application interacts with the backend application now if you want me to continue with this series of tutorial you can suggest me the things that i can do with this website and i can be adding different modules to it maybe the security module login module all these things we can add but for that i need your support if you support me then only i can proceed with these kind of tutorials so i request you to kindly subscribe to this channel and what all the modification you want with this tutorial so that i can continue with the next tutorials don't worry about the code you will get the code from my github account or from my website and the link will be given in the description so that's it for this session thanks for watching